All right, so we're going to finish up locus of attention. We just have a couple of more slides, and then I'm going to go over some more of the details of assignment two and give you some time to work on assignment two. So we've been talking about your locus of attention, how we have a singular locus of attention. We can only pay attention to one thing at a time. But there are things called automatic tasks, what many also call habits, and we can actually engage in multiple habits at the same time. Now, we also did talk about interruptions. Right, so if we're dealing with automatic tasks or habits, for example, we want to make sure that we remember that with our interruptions, if we have something that interrupts what we're doing, if it's a very quick interruption, it's fairly easy for us to go back to what we're doing. But if it is more than a few seconds, we have to use our own volition. In other words, we have to essentially will ourselves, get ourselves to actually shift our attention back to our task. That takes time. That takes cognitive load. Now, why is that? Well, because we're dealing with short-term memory. And we're dealing with how we as humans have a very limited short-term memory. And not everything that goes into short-term memory goes into our long-term memory. So we need to remember that. So if we actually look at this, and we think about how we might be able to apply this to design, we can really look at a lot of different things on how we can help users, as well as hinder users. Of course, we don't want to hinder users. Usually, if we don't think about it, we hinder users. So I'm going to go ahead and wake you up since it's night and bright and early. Some of you looked up, at least I know you're awake. And I'm going to ask you a question. And this is a design question about an application. If you have an application, right, you have, you're, you're a user, you're using that application, and it just so happens, let's say you're working on something, you have to go to class, you leave for class, you come back, you now are restarting the application. What are two things that can happen when you restart that application in terms of where you start off? I'm going to, I, it can be where you left off. What else? Or you just have a standard start menu or start page. All right, which is better? It depends. Right, there are times where it would certainly be more, more efficient and much faster for us if we can just go back to where we left off. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it be nice if I could come up to my PowerPoint and open it up here and I don't have to go going through the slides to try to figure out, okay, what did I say last class? Where did I leave off? It'll just kind of pop up. That would be nice. Of course, if I need to start working on a new PowerPoint slide or actually a new file, I think it's going to get a little annoying. Yeah, probably. Now, there are examples in the real world that are actually pretty basic that are able to take advantage of something like this. So, for example, your television. What happens when you turn your television on? It's the last channel you were on or the last channel your children were on. Right? What about your radio? Same thing. Right? Very convenient. Bless you. But one of the things we want to think about is when we are designing an application, what will most of our users want to occur most of the time? That's really how you want to try to make that decision. And sometimes it's not an easy decision to make. So if we look at PowerPoint, for example, if, um, if I open up PowerPoint in the default mode, it will just kind of open up to a new document, unless I double, you know, if I, unless I double click the document. Right, then it opens up that document. Now, one of the questions some pe people have when they bo don't bother to look at the menu is, oh gosh, but you know, I wanted to open this document. I don't remember where it is, so now what do I do? So 
So if you're in PowerPoint, what's something that they did that's actually pretty simple? Maybe not as efficient as opening up directly into a file, but that makes it easy for users to find. Right, so if you go to file, you go to open recent. So that's an example of finding an alternative. Now, I want you to think about what we talked about in terms of memory. How does that help us in terms of memory? Right. The programmer already knows what it is. Right, so in other words, we don't have to worry about recall in terms of trying to find the file. We just have to worry about recognition. Use the menu item, recent items, there's the file. We can quickly scan those files and recognize the file that we want. So very simple concept, not necessarily always easy to apply. Make sense? Now, how many of you remember Microsoft Office before the recent files was available? Is anyone? Am I the only one? Okay, a couple of, a couple of you. Yeah, there was a time where that didn't exist. I'm sorry? I think it was Office 2003. I could be wrong, because I'm having to recall instead of recognize. So, something very subtle but very helpful to users. All right, so when we're dealing with a lot of applications, we want to try to simplify things, make it e as easy as possible for our users, and sometimes you have to think about that a little bit. You can't just think about what we want, it's what our users want. All right. And uh, okay, so I already covered the slide too. No easy answer. You have to balance things out. All right, any questions?